like we did before, we had an example after we saw how to use the temperature change. So let's look at the same example, but we'll see, we'll change it around just a little bit. So we're going to look at the same problem. We had 17 ounces, we dropped it from 104 down to 50 degrees Fahrenheit, figured out how much energy was uh, taken away from the, uh, the soda. Now we ask ourselves, how much ice melted? in that process. Assume we had ice, a lot of ice in there. How much of our ice got turned to water in that case? And we're not going to worry about that when the water uh, starts to exist, the water um, gets to change its temperature as well. We're just going to look at how much ice does it take to drop that temperature. So we know um, equation to figure out a phase change. Since we're melting ice, we're going through a phase change, we have to figure out how much mass it is of ice that's going to get converted from solid to liquid. So we have to figure out what the latent heat is, and we have to know what the temp or what the heat was that we changed, how much energy was removed from the system or transferred. So we rearrange the equation because we really want to solve the mass of the ice that gets converted to water. So we need, as I said, a value for the fusion, the latent heat of fusion of ice to water. And that happens to be 334,000 joules per kilogram. It's a big number. So we plug in the numbers. We have a latent heat here. We're going to use the 62,790 joules from the previous problem. It's the amount of energy required to take the heat out from 104 degrees down to 50 degrees for 17 ounces of soda. We divide the two number and we come up with a wonderful value of 0.188 kilograms or 188 grams. So it's not a lot of ice, that's probably around 20 or 200 cubic centimeters of ice. Say an ice cube is about 10, 10 grams per ice cube. We're melting somewhere around 10 ice cubes to lower it, which it seems pretty reasonable for this. So again, this is not the full way to solve this problem, but just to get an idea of how much ice would melt if we were to lower the temperature. So kind of an easy problem to solve. Again, we just used the, uh, the heat of fusion because we went through a phase change from solid to liquid. There was no temperature change of the ice or the ice water, um, but that energy had to go from the soda into it. So we took the soda, the energy released from the soda, and converted that into the energy to melt the ice.